at any moment or she might be late. Um, well, I, look, f first of all, let me welcome you to this first seminar in the uh, Higher Adult and Vocational Education Research Centre, here she is, uh, series for um, your lateness has been noted <laughs> um, for, for the year. Um, we're very fortunate to have our colleague uh, Jean Lee speaking on, um, uh, well, you can see her title up there, but around the issue, around the question of, of using Margaret Archer's theories. Um, Jean, of course, has been with us uh, for about a year and made a big mark working on uh, international higher education. So, oh, uh, I, I should just by way of saying that this is the first of, our, of, of the series. We, we haven't yet advertised our seminar for November, but I'm expecting something to come out pretty soon, which will which will uh, uh, please and excite you. Uh, and there is a there is a seminar arranged already for December, which will be our colleague John Morgan uh, speaking on. Uh, um, the, uh, UNESCO and the Four Report and all kinds of things around that. Some work he's doing there. But for now, Jen. Um, okay, thank you, John. Um, yes, very glad to have this opportunity to talk uh, about Archer and uh, <coughs> and some of my research. Uh, although it's still in a very limited scale, um, British sociologist Margaret Archer's work started to attract you know, more and more attention in uh, ed education research. So in this seminar, I just like to <coughs> share some of my readings of Margaret Archer and the use of her theory in, um, theories in education research uh, with you uh, in order to stimulate some uh, discussion and debate um, on the topic um, maybe even in more general um, using the draw of research, uh, the uh, theory in education research. So firstly, <coughs> why use social theory in education? Um, I'm not a sociologist, okay, and I'm uh, not sociology from a sociology background myself. So if you do have any very difficult sociology questions, ask John. <laughs> um, as many people, you know, who are doing education research, my interest, you know, my uh, initial interest in start from my PhD is uh, about human learning. Um, it's about the, uh, you know, to understand human learning. How do we learn, and how we reach our understanding? Um, so very naturally, start with from looking at educational theories. And then I found, you know, across all these different schools of thought, you know, learning theories, different schools of thought, and, and there are uh, some fundamental uh, assumptions behind all these different and, and opinion of these different understandings. Uh, firstly, it's about the assumption made about the nature of the learners. So who we are, what we are as individual learners. Um, and then secondly, it's nature of knowledge. What count as knowledge? Um, does knowledge pre-exist us, or you know, or is it something we constructed from our um, mind? And then the third assumption is then is about the relationship between the learner and the context. So, what are these relationship decide and uh, influence our understanding? How we acquire knowledge, obtain knowledge, and the ways of coming to know. Um, just give you an example to illustrate the, uh, this. I take these uh, classic Western <coughs> uh, learning theories, and then uh, if we group into like uh, three, you know, big groups: associative perspective, cognitive perspective, situative perspective, and then the left-hand side column, uh, we got these uh, assumptions. So, for example, the first column, when learning uh, is understood from a um, associative perspective, then it's more or less, you know, for example, the behaviorist approach, uh, see more or less the permanent change in behavior. Uh, in this uh, theorization, the nature of learners apparently is seen as irrational individuals whose behavior can be predicted, okay? And the knowledge here is uh, 
um, as like uh, changing behaviors as precise learning outcomes. And the relationship between these two, the learners and the environment or the context, they are completely separate. And uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the like Skinner's operating uh, uh, conditioning and, and this. And then, then we go into the cognitive post step, for example, learning is uh, like constructing meanings from the early stage of a PRG, you know, by uh, learning seen as a biological organism, you know, is involved involving. Um, <clears throat> so the nature to the later, the Vygotsky social constructive is more social and the learners are more intimidated to their context. So the nature of knowledge is, you know, seen as cognitive activity is constructed and uh, construction of understanding. Um, the relationship is still separate, but it's much more uh, closed, particularly to, uh, towards the later um, social constructive uh, approach. And then we get to the situate, for example, the situated perspective. Uh, we all know, like um, um, community of practice, you know, um, distributed cognition and uh, as such. So learning is here is through this co-participation and the social engagement. So the nature of learner here is situated in the social practice. <clears throat> and the, the nature of knowledge here is not a property of any individual anymore, but it belongs to a group or social practice. Therefore, the, uh, in the relationship between the learner and the context be become uh, interdependent and uh, even mutual cons uh, constitute in some cases. Uh, so this is just an example of, uh, you know, um, why I think these are few like fundamental assumptions behind either it's made uh, explicitly or implicitly in these understandings of learning. Well, in social theory, uh, mm, I think there's a few fundamental questions which are very similar to what we're trying to understand learning in those educational theories. One is about human condition, you know, <coughs> and then the second is the the structural and the cultural properties, you know, or the structural issues, uh, context issues, uh, the nature of those properties. And then the third one is about human behavior and the interaction with the uh, structure. And then again, the, the final question is, is, uh, uh, is one of the fundamental issues about uh, understanding the socialization process. <clears throat> So from this, we can see these two areas are very much interlinked. And they are not, um, you know, completely separate. And um, and Dag and Brian in an article um, in 2011 talking about the social learning, um, they raised the, they, they argued learning is essential to our existence as being in the world, both in the mundane sense of. Uh, getting through the day and in any value-laden project leading to living in a worthwhile life. So we learn every day, you know, as we go along and living everyday life. Um, <clears throat> as you know, it's a, maybe you can argue it's a different type of learning as you in your any learning situation, formal learning uh, situations, but you know, it's kind of learning. And in a very similar vein, I would uh, argue being is also very fundamental to learning. And being a learner, one you know does not cease to be a human being, li living one's everyday life. I know it sounds very obvious, but <coughs> uh, but I think ironically, when we're doing educational research, we often forget about it. You know, we 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 interested in people's motivation in learning a particular course. But then we forget maybe they have other concerns in, in order to get up, you know, get on with their everyday life. <coughs> so therefore I think um, social theories can, you know, help us enrich our understanding on learning. And um, and that's why uh, that's what my, my take on that. Um, <coughs> Mike Gray Archer giving a conceptualization of our a relationship between us as human being and with the with the um, reality, and she asks, argues everyone, every of us, simultaneously and um, are necessarily living in these uh, three orders of realities, and this is <coughs> in her two thousand book. So it's natural, practical, and the social order. The power of our human being um, come from these three, the power from these three orders reality uh, generate different types of uh, 
um, knowledge, uh, as embodied knowledge, practical knowledge, and discursive knowledge. <clears throat> I'll give example of this. For example, we encounter a deep water. It's from the natural order, yeah? And um, the, the water carries both positive and the negative power. So we might drown on it, or we can float. So in order to not to drown on it and float, we, you know, we may adjust our, you know, and learn how to get float in the water. So that's, we learn those from, we gain those knowledge, how to float on the water by direct contact with, you know, in the water by, by that. And so that's what embodied knowledge, what um, Archer is talking about here. But then human power does not stop there. We can invent artifact. So we can invent boat, you know, in order to get uh, a float on the water. But in order to get where we want to get to, we needed to gain some practical knowledge, how to row in a boat, how to sail a boat. Again, we can gain that from, you know, learning from somebody, from practice. Um, but then the knowledge can be extended from that order. Say you want to sail very fast. You might want to look at a book about theory, which is knowledge from the right hand social order, <coughs> uh, about the wind, about the, you know, the tide, and how to control the sail. So this forms of knowledge can um, sometimes can be you know can transferred in a different order <coughs> so the value of this conceptualization uh, for me is because a lot of uh, academic learning is happened in if you like is the, the the most right hand side of is the social order which is uh, you know as um, is the proposition uh, culture you know theories and this we often talk about this disjunction between that and the practical, you know, the theory and the practice. And also, <coughs> based on this, um, Archer his uh, her um, theorization about personal identity. So how we uniquely and reflexively define ourselves by uh, virtue of our consolation concerns about the world. Um, and here's also a quote which says human beings can never put aside the fact they have material interest as well as ID, um, additional involvement such as material interest are generally rooted in our embodiment in what we need to survive throughout uh, our exile. So <clears throat> use that, I think I looked at one of the uh, a program in intent to understand the learner's experience. Um, so rather than confined or constrained in, the in, in, in their immediate learning settings, I look at you know, their intentions, their reasons of coming to learn, or even the changing of attitude, the changing of commitment uh, during the course, in terms of uh, you know, the angle of uh, how people see the, um, the relationship about promoting their personal concerns in course study. So rather than just labeling as, oh, this is intrinsic motivation or extrinsic motivation because they just want to get out, you know, direct. So it's from this perspective um, and how people trying to strike up balance among their different commitments. Uh, and in this case, uh, what I looked is they are adult learners. So this issue are particularly, you know, um, important in the sense they have very many, you know, demanding um, life commitment in other aspects. And also what I found the learning as a, this ongoing emotional charged process, you know, how uh, they are emotional changed and how their commitment changed. Um, so learning experience on, from this perspective, it, it reflects a continuing and a dynamic process during which learners they consult their concerns, you know, aroused by interacting these different orders of reality and considering their response to the encounters with them and accommodate their learning um, with these different you know, aspects of their lives. So that's just an example of uh, um, that if you're interested in this, uh, can refer to uh, this paper uh, of mine. 
and that's an enduring theme in both social theory and the philosophy of education, which is concerning the privilege of one powerful source of influence over another. In social theory, for example, there's a theory um, that emphasizes the relative importance of structural properties. Um, you know, we are what society makes of us. And uh, as compared to those uh, theories uh, who are, you know, um, championing our human beings' own capacity uh, of uh, constructing the world, um, represent as more or less we are, you know, we can make the world uh, more or less free of the contextual uh, constraint. So very similarly, you know, in, in educational <coughs> theory, we, we also get this kind of, you know, two uh, dimensions debate. One is uh, argue, you know, there is a body of knowledge pre-exist to us. Therefore, coming to learn is very much transmit those knowledge, or at least the repu reproduce those knowledge to some extent. As compared to those, you know, learning is very much more or less, you know, it's a personal discovery and uh, and the construction or even social construction. Just give an example. The debate can go back to, you know, a uh, long time back to the history. Earliest Plato in his uh, Republic talk about the education was seen as a product of a good society which in which f uh, philosophers specify what would be taught, learned, and, and um, um, you know, all this. And then, si very similarly, Durkheim talk about the need for individuals to assimilate the concept of their civilization before they can engage with others. In the East, Confucius, back to uh, over 2,000 years ago, he talks about a man who reveals the old side to find out the new is qualified to teach others. So, Wen Gu Er Zhi Xin Ke Yi Wei Shi Ye, okay? It's talking about, you know, is he does not encourage this uh, um, arbitrary innovation. You know, if you want to innovate something, you create something new, you need to master what's already there. So, it's, a, it's kind of a, you know, similar idea here. And on the other hand, we have a uh, French philosopher uh, Rousseau talk about children learning, mostly referred to here. Learning is through, you know, should just through play and the children go out, you know, personal discovery. And then we have uh, Nietzsche talk about God is dead, you know, <laughs> people no longer tend to the religion for examination and giving meaning to life, but to the enlightenment idea of making sense of the world through subjective perception. If it's a subjective perception, then there must be individual, yeah? It's, it's different. Everyone, you know, mine can be different from yours. Um, and then Mayo and uh, Max Weber will be seeing a similar in this strand. Um, and then in educational theory, I think we found actually some forms of social constructivism, or uh, at least uh, some interpretation of that, um, is in a similar kind of uh, um, strand, which is question any claims uh, to objective a knowledge and a truth about anything. Uh, Michael Young, in his uh, 2007 uh, book, very much uh, raised concern about uh, um, uh, about this stance uh, of the or this understanding of knowledge, um, which he talks about. You know, any the, the claims under undermining mm, the like objective knowledge and the truth is also deny any better understanding, um, let alone a better world. So he says um, one uh, social is, uh, you know, sorry, one of the things that um, one does not um, recreate science through <coughs> personal experience, because science is social, it's not individual. We learn about it. Um, so that's that's uh, Michael Young's book in critique. Uh, it is in, in his 2007 brief knowledge back in. Um, then in both social theory and and educational theory, we see some attempts to try to reconcile this uh, uh, dichotomy. Uh, dichotomy. <laughs> uh, firstly, it's like Giddens' notion of uh, duality of structure in his structuration theory. 
which, well, structure is in both medium and outcome of the reproduction of practice. So social practice is seen as something, uh, a crucial mediating moment, well, individual and the society bring together. Okay. And the Buddha in and in his conceptualization of uh, habitus, you know, again, is against trying to transcend this uh, dualism between the individual and the society. Yeah. Um, in education theory, the social culture approach of learning, I think, for me, is very much in a similar kind of uh, taking a similar stand. We see the disappearing boundary between learners and context. So learning becomes distributed cognition, situated learning, community practice, you know, activity theory, and all these are, uh, we, we see this, uh, the way to, 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 to convey it. And Archer provide a very powerful um, critique, a theoretical critique to uh, um, both Giddens' structuration theory and, uh, and uh, Buddha's habitus, uh, conceptualization habitus and uh, categorize them as a central <coughs> conflationist. And the problem of that, uh, so the, the, there's two fundamental um, assumptions in this central conflationist. One is called the process ontology, and another is individual society inseparability. So the process ontology is, you know, it's only, for example, the social practice is only one, you know, the moment when it's in practice, we can study it. You know, there's no anything pre-exist. Um, and in this way, the individual and the society cannot be separate ontologically and analytically. They are, in a way, they are mutually constituted. And therefore, Archer argues uh, they are both empirically and theoretically untenable. Because if we want to examine the interplay between structure and agency, we must be able to identify an uh, undoing enti entity between the two, not as uh, what Giddens argues, structure only has a virtual existence un until it's um, you know, uh, initiated by social practice. And a similar question can be asked in educational research, <coughs> which is, if we want to study, investigate the social interaction in a learning context, so how can we do that without the capacity to identify a, a relatively enduring entity of, for example, the context, and no matter how uh, it is composed? So Archer's response to this first is her uh, morphogenetic approach, and then we, and another is analytical dualism. And then also through her most recent work on reflexivity. And we, we'll talk a little bit more later on that. So before we go into the Archer's morphogenetic approach, we just very give a very brief introduction of critical realism. It's um, a philosophical tradition. Okay? But it's not a series of social theory itself. It applies in both, both nature and social sciences. And its ontological assumption uh, is that there are uh, stratified reality at the levels of empirical, which is uh, uh, normally um, seen as the domain of naive realism. So it's the event recorded by our senses. Okay, but our senses can be wrong, can be misleading. So beneath that is uh, um, actual. Um, which is often uh, turned as a scientific realism. <coughs> and then there's real, which is concerned about um, generative mechanism. Um, Abaska, Roy Abaska claimed, you know, it, it is the task of uh, both natural and social scientists to, to uncover this uh, generative mechanism to understand, you know, what actually generate um, uh, actual event manifested in empirical um, uh, level of reality to reach a better understanding. 
do I need a post to let people ask questions? <laughs> or because it can be difficult for people who have never, you know, uh, come across this these concepts and uh, ideas. So anyway, it means you know we don't. Um, so we 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 try and in order to reach better understanding, we we need to understand how things really works behind what we can see. That's simple, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So that's the generative, you know, mechanism. What you know, the people from critical uh, realist tradition trying to, you know, um, encourage people to to discover in 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 nature and the social uh, science research. And there's two important concepts here. One is a stratification, which we just mentioned here, and another is emergency. Um, Emergence means that uh, there's different, you know, the power uh, attain, um, pretend to different level of reality. So therefore, they are, appear at different time. Therefore, the time is a very, very important concept in the uh, critical realist approach. Um, the central tenet of uh, um, critical realism is there are two sets of emergent properties pertaining to each of agency and the structure, those of object. And subject, they are radically different in kind, in reducible to each other, and uh, but they are intervening, but still open to analytical separation. About this, uh, you know, uh, this uh, stratified reality, um, what I must uh, um, emphasize is not a. Uh, it's just a, a way, a perspective. You do not claim the truth about the reality is like this. Okay, it's a way to for us to do the do our research. You know, so it's a, it's not a um, a philosophical stance as such. So this ontological <coughs> distinction actually implies a methodology based on this analytical dualism. It's about you know how we can analytically bring these two sets of power together uh, to explain any social outcome, any social interaction. We need you know the. Uh, to bring the power from the structure, from the agency, from individual and the society, you know, object, subject, and the, but it's not co-determination, it's analytically, you know, um, interaction. Okay, so could, 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 could I inter interrupt just Jen, for a moment? Yeah. Jen? I, I'm 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 finding it slightly complicated to get at what Archer means in no Basker means. I'm sorry, mm. in that fr that quotation there, we've got agency and structure. Yeah, uh, but we've also got object and subject within agency and str uh, and I'm just trying to work out what that might mean in, uh, in, for example, um, a classroom or something. Or um, structure might be the fact that we, I don't know. Actually, I'll give us an example on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, so if we oh, just have a okay. look, okay. this yeah, this is a uh, Archer's uh, morphogenetic uh, morphogenetic uh, cycle. Um, well, we can see, you know, there's a three cycles there, and um, they are not in a continuous uh, um, uh, line. That's deliberate you to show, you know, they are discontinuous, they are disjunctive, you know, uh, uh, cycles. We are we all boring, you know, if we look at the first one, T1, we all, we all born in ongoing social cultural conditions, <coughs> which are not our own making. Yeah, so... Um, Take example like education system, you know, uh, as Archer's uh, classic uh, study you should, should uh, start. So education system, we, we come into study in well, any degree, any courses embedded in uh, any edu education system. But that system itself is not created by ourselves. It's, you know, it's maybe by formal generations, you know, by formal, uh, you know, subject. And, uh, but that conditions how we interact. So conditions, you know, kind of shape the situation where the learners find themselves, and that leads into the social interaction. Well, you know, we have practice in, at that level, and um, we might not happy with the, some of the things, you know, in in our in our course in our university in um, even refer to the whole education system. We might make some trying to make some change, but some of the things easier to change than the others, 
you know, maybe some teacher and learning arrangement easier to change than the other universe rules in accreditation in, you know, in other things. So we might possibly lead into some structural elaboration. So that's, you know, kind of the, the cycle um, Arthur was talking about here. Is in order to be able to take the structural uh, properties as a pre-given, as, you know, pre-exist. So, uh, but in order to work, you know, all those uh, work, it has to combine with the social, uh, only work through social practice. Although it sounds very much like Giddens' structuration theory, isn't it? But the difference here is time. It's very much the Archer emphasizes the time. Because what Giddens like is, is, is that depends the, the, you know, the structural property, the, 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 efficacy of structural properties depends on the current agent. While Archer argues it's not depend current agent now. It's you know because what we are working you know within the situation is you know is something come from maybe you know other people previous cohort, previous you know generation. So that's the difference how Archer be able to separate these two rather than just them together as a social practice and to see how these two uh, interact. So example of in uh, learning settings, in education, um, if we, you know, any, we take up, you know, uh, uh, any program or anything, we see that will be, you know, the structural condition here can include national institution or wider social culture nature and also as well as some future features in the immediate learning settings about course design, teaching and arrangement as we said just now. And then social interaction can be learning and can be other, you know, uh, social cultural actions and other parts of uh, other aspects. And then possibly leading to some change, possibly not, because Archer's, you know, study mostly are all concerned with this big scale of, you know, the social change as such. Then for us, it's, you know, mostly we are doing some small scale, you know, um, educational research, which is not possible. But I don't think that, you know, I th still think this model, this theorization is very powerful um, for us to understand the social interaction, even in a very, you know, small learning settings. Um, just give you one more concrete example, which is taken from my own study to trying to understand a learner's experience. So this is uh, the case. This is, is a two to five years a part-time e-learning program in China, a bachelor e-learning degree program uh, hosted by one of the key universities. And the university has uh, 32 study centers across the country. Okay, with over 2,000 students enrolled in five subjects while the data was collected. And there's a various forms of material, textbook, CD-ROM, you know, so electronic forms of, uh, and then there's, um, it, it courses mostly designed for individual self-study really, and um, but aided by some online lecturing, but very few, like mm, two to three times in a s one semester, you know, and. Um, and, this, and also there are some online discussion forums set up in, 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 the, um, in the main um, uh, course website. And this for, these are for um, adult you know, learners, mostly in a full-time job, who want to get a better degree. So e-learning provides a very flex flexible you know, uh, route for them to, to do that. And this just gives you some, you know, very, uh, some idea about the course structure. So we have um, students coming to get their, learning, get their learning materials from the various study centers. Um, and then, so they they'll go back to study. They can attend the online lectures, you know, th two or three times a term, or they can look the videos recorded. Um, they can, you know, go to the general discussion forum, which are mostly for general questions, you know, uh, um, like technical pro uh, issues. And they can go to some <coughs> forum, which is talk about the subject, you know, matters. Uh, um, and then there are some different, also uh, 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 interest settings as a teaching assistant. 
tutor's uh, uh, role is mostly just delivering these online lectures, which will be recorded. Okay, it's live, but people can attend if they at that time they can you know go in to see it. But very few interaction because two thousand students <laughs> around this country, you know, so they are not encouraged to ask questions during the lecture. Okay, although they can, the platform was designed, you know, the, the software you can. You can raise question, and there's a sign on the, you know, on the, and uh, there's interactive. They ask the interactive features on there, but <laughs> it's hardly used uh, because of the scale of uh, the class. And then, um, so students are not, you know, very much not encouraged to ask questions during the class, but they can ask questions <laughs> after the, the class. You know, there's some a bit time left, but still the number you know there's a very people can actually have that actually therefore there's a teaching assistant uh, set up to manage the forum you know they will kind of uh, this teaching assistant mostly are the uh, postgraduate students uh, and they you know they could answer the questions on uh, students my race okay um so data source uh, there's an online questionnaire and then uh, had the 249 returned um, so, individuals, uh, individual groups, uh, uh, focus group interview, 35 individuals in total, and also I had eight students kept the audio, um, digital audio diary for one semester, which, you know, enabled me to follow up what's, you know, what happened after I left uh, the, the field. So there's some findings and analysis. If I I, I did, which is coding um, using Archer's, you know, uh, morphogenetic cycle we, we just presented. Firstly, so if you look at the social conditioning, um, because, you know, partly because the, 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 the social economic environment in China, the, the rapid, you know, uh, economic uh, Mm, development. There's very high demand for lifelong learning, but also partly because you know there's a um, you know historical uh, breakdown of the high education system, and there's a whole generation who missed the opportunity to go to the university. So all this kind of push the the the, the very high demand for for not just um, mm, not just the the, the uh, lifelong learning opportunities. But particularly, like e-learning, you know, is provide this very flexible um, way for people to go back to university, get their degrees, and uh, the government is very much pushing that, you know. And the many institutions they set up the e-learning program for that sake, you know, it's they can see it's the benefit of doing that as a huge economic, you know, benefit on that. But with a very limited understanding what requires, you know, uh, um, with that to, to ensure that the learning and the teacher and learning quality. So the e-learning cost very much was a design, it was a very, uh, still is a traditional, you know, uh, course which just moved online, you know, and then the materials become an electronic version, and they, although they still have textbook. So the findings we found, that, you know, when you look at the social interaction in the, in in the actual settings, we found students they have very they wish to have more intensive interaction with the lectures, but it's unfulfilled because you know the ratio and the, and the, and the, the the setting, the learning setting, and the, how the course was designed, and because all these people they are the students they are you know they food they have full time job, and they they struggled a bit with the the uh, the, the foreign the, the this kind of uh, synchronous nature of communication. They found that if they raise questions, they can't get immediate answer, and they tend to forget about it. You know, then come back, then you know, just can't follow the thread. And then, and also interviewed lecturers, and uh, with you know, what I found that they have very limited experience as well as knowledge of online le learning and the teaching. And also because we talk about this early, the social you know condition, the is the, the institution condi uh, uh, structure. Well, the course was de was delivered by the school of they have called the distance education. Although there's different subjects, they not belong to which. For example, you are doing a degree in law, but you're not doing it in the law department. You're doing, you know, because it's in e-learning course. You're doing it in a distance, and the teacher was, you know, 
was like a guest, you know, lecture given, you know, they, they are from different subject department. So their commitment is a big issue here. You know, it's, they don't seem to very, they don't see these students as their own student. And uh, very, very interesting is, despite all this very negative, you know, and the picture which I have gained, there's also some very positive sign, which is we see this very high level of self, self help and spontaneous collaborations which emerged amongst the, these learners. They use not just the, the platform, you know, online forums uh, uh, provided by the course itself. They use their own daily, you know, um, communicative tools, telephone and all other things to build up this network and then to help each other. And for example, this group, they, someone, they know, oh, she had a degree in economics. We have an exam in that. So, so this person even organized people and she gave a lecture to to her peer student. So I found that's a very, very, you know, interesting phenomenon in, this, in itself, which is, you know, very much we, we talk about this uh, learning community, you know, kind of emerged, but not as intended, you know, not designed by the course itself. And another um, one, I like, I select two incidents to trying to show this uh, social elaboration uh, phrase of this uh, uh, morphogenetic cycle. The first incident is we saw there's, um, um, because as I said, you know, people really very much appreciate the contact, the interact with the lecturers, although it's very limited. But in fact, it's only two or three times in the whole seminar, just the lecture sitting there and a and the very deductive way of, you know, just the talk and the giving lecture. But still, people appreciate, see, at least we see the real person and give us feeling, you know, this kind of the, the real. Um, and, uh, and then there's a very poor delivered lecture, which, you know, um, raised this very strong reaction amongst the students. They feel like, we only have this few, and then and this lecture apparently is not prepared well. You come in in a rush and give just like a you complete a task, and people had a wide extensive discussion in their forum, and then they decide they they come into a conclusion, they, they come into a decision, and say maybe we should write a proposal to the head of school. We should ask this lecture to be de re delivered, <coughs> and uh, that's what they did, and uh, and the. The, the result of that, the lecture, uh, post uh, apology on the on the forum, on the course, you know, announcement, say, you know, the lecture was fully, you know, it was uh, ill prepared because of her personal reasons and that, 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 and then the school arranged a an, new an <coughs> lecture to cover. So that, again, I think that incident showed this a change of power, you know, react how people can make change, you know, in a, within a short period of time. And there's a second incident I select to, to illustrate this point is there's a conflict between the students and a teaching assistant. What happened was um, there's a student, um, because this is the course on English translation, and the students ask for, a you know, say, oh, I have difficulties <coughs> on this, this uh, paragraph of text. Can you help to translate for me? And the teaching assistant say, this is not my job. My job is dealing with uh, your questions arise from the course content itself. So these materials come out from outside. So I should, you know, this is not my responsibility to do that. And then there's another student who saw this discussion. He came in and he did the translation for that student and posted it online. And what happened was the teacher assistant <laughs> deleted that message, <laughs> deleted that translation, he said, this is the forum for discuss the course method, you know, but not something uh, beyond. And therefore, this kind of behavior is not encouraged. That, you know, <laughs> there's a big, you know, a, a big fire come out. And it's really, so the long, uh, it's a big campaign, you know, uh, uh, against this, uh, this particular, you know, um, incident, because the public nature of the online forum so make this you know kind of roaring new and bigger and um, and also what's interesting here is because all these students the adult learners many of them said that they have years of 
professional experience. You know, they they come in study to, you know, discuss and even trying to educate because this teacher assistant is a postgraduate student in the university. You know, never been any had any work experience herself. They study education. So what the discussion forum is for, you know, isn't that is for you know have this good discussion, you know, of ideas and what you know should be expected from a good teacher. You know, can you define what is within the curriculum, what is outside the curriculum, and and such. Um, so the the the. The result of this is because the disquiet, you know, the critique of this finally attracted attention of the school, and um, so the issue of uh, TA uh, training was first time, you know, brought into discussion, and then it was planned to to implement for next academic year, and uh, and the, so the, the interesting is these uh, students is actually. We can see this collective, you know, Asian power. How they redefine the relationship between themselves and the institution. So under the under the structure, you know, of the course. And we could expect the next cohort coming. There might be some different. The social condition will be different from then, even in a very small aspect of the course. But that is because this their previous cohort, you know. Made this campaign, made this, you know, trying to make this change, and therefore they come in into slightly different situation. They found themselves. That's why, you know, I think this can be a very, very powerful analytical tool for us to understand the social interaction in the learning setting, in the education settings. Um, this is the. Triology of uh, Archer's uh, work uh, in invest in, in in reflexivity, uh, investing re reflexivity as a mediation between the structure agency. Um, so, in her 2007 book, she talk about you know mostly emphasize this uh, globalization, how the situation is more become more dynamic and uh, not static the speed of change is much faster we have decline of routine and uh, so there's more pressure on individuals to be reflexive you know to be um so it's not all about habitus anymore we can't you know it, it rely on this uh, more authority source about what what to do and um and she defines uh, reflexivity as um the, the regular exercise, you know, of a uh, um, mental ability shared by all normal people, um, consider themselves in relation to their social context and vice versa. And she very much stressed such reflexive forms potentially fallible, you know, of people's decision making and action. And uh, she proposed this three stage model, which is structure objectively shape the situation where individuals find themselves instead of uh, subject directly interact with it there's a process uh, which is their you know um, individuals they yeah they think about it they deliberate they you know uh, in terms of their ultimate concerns of life you know what they really want and how the current situation going to shape it what is practical what is not practical and what is something they have to give up what is there something they have to compromise or what is something you know what what kind of life they can live and uh, well or what kind of they can live without so there's this stage which is the second stage i think is uh, the the key um, process which archer refers as the reflexivity process and then they take action they design a project and uh, and the practice to to um, to realize their ultimate concerns, and in her most recent book, uh, two thousand twelve, Archer reconceptualized the socialization, taking the form of uh, relational reflexivity. It's very much influenced by an Italian uh, sociologist, uh, Don Donati, I think. Yeah, uh, relational sociology. <laughs> If you think of Archer's books, very difficult to read. Try to read his book, <laughs> 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 and um, then back you will find Archer's 
book is easy <laughs> because it's Italian and sometimes the translated work is even you know more difficult um, but anyway I should challenge the con conventional approach of socialization which relies on the relatively stable consensual notion of what is normal but what she argues now in the late modernity era the world is full of diversity you know diverse diverse culture diverse uh, uh, values you know and all this we um we more intellect more than ever and there's also with this rapid that's less and less things about normal what is normal lots of things to be normalized and then that's uh, authority a source for people to seek say this is definitely thing definitely the right thing to do and and very often people are receiving much more mixed message and um, so this book is very much concerned about um, how people actively making meaningful choice from this mixed message and to receive and achieve some governance over future tragedy of their own lives of course, Archer is not the first one in 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 social uh, social uh, sociology who you know talk about this importance of uh, reflexivity. You know, Bauman talk about it. You know, Beck talk about it. All this talk uh, Bauman talk about now the the human identity is uh, is not taken but is making. You know, so it's all this importance about human the own decisions. You know, on, on making decisions more reflexive decisions, um, and then. In both books, you know, Archer developed this uh, her dominant mode of reflexivity, which is uh, categorized into four groups: communicative autonomous matter and the fractured reflexives. And uh, she argues these four modes practiced by all of some of the time, you know, all of us some of time through internal conversation, but it's not pure psychologically uh, determined. It's not something you know, you're just purely thinking yourself because it's always uh, involved in some relation in the relational terms about how you your relationship with your the you know different order of reality, the situation you are, you know, and the, and such. Um I have slightly problem with this foremost because uh, foremost because um, I I felt her her use of reflexives slightly have a kind of runs the danger of labeling you know kind of a, um, it, it's although she said you know people can adopt different reflexive mode in different situations but she thinks in her sample 90 percent people show this uh, dominate you know reflexive uh, mode in, in across the day because and also it's kind of a kind of a undermine the you know individual um, ability to adapt you know in, in a sense and also the maybe I think it's better to see it as a, a strategy rather than a mode I don't know that's you know that's something maybe for for discussion um, but also I did uh, you know if you look look up her questionnaire you know, she, she, she based on her she did some in in death interviews with all her participants and followed by some questionnaire and I don't feel you know I did that questionnaire myself I can't identify which mode I am because I just find that some of the questions does not align but that's my opinion you know it need to be very uh, brave to challenge this uh, great socialist <laughs> but on the other hand I do think you know maybe as a like a Giddens uh, she's good at this theory and I'm not particularly impressed though for her empirical you know work I, I feel taking away these modes for example doesn't make her theory any worse you know so it doesn't I don't I, I don't know I, I still can't see you know how this is particularly helpful and also but I do find the her, her notion of a relational reflexivity very appealing. Also, uh, you know, partly because, for example, I did a, a re research on a, very, a small scale research in study um, a group of uh, students their decision making process. You know, uh, their personal the process of constructing employability. Um, 
it's a multiple longitudinal case study. Um, a group of Chinese students at a UK universities. So what I've found is because the the discourse of employability very often we see it from the policy you know perspective and few from this more individual uh, personal perspective. And what I found is that this uh, employability transition discourse is not just a labor market outcome, um, but also is a social process. There is a very strong need for a the theoretical framework that allows the examination of you know to of this very dynamic um, uh, process to to be able to 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 tackle the the relationship between the graduates and, as individuals and the labor market, or even their uh, wider social uh, context. Um, I have uh, one paper published on that, and uh, working on the second one. So the question for me now, I found, for example, the relational reflexivity notion very appealing because one of the things um, with I found, you know, constructing this employability for this group, you know, young people, is far more complicated than a uh, process of instrumental, uh, you know. Uh, ration, rationality. It's not about you know to calculating what brings the you know out the best uh, economic return or, or whatever. It sometimes it retains an emotional charge. It is what they care about. And these young people, they are constructing their personal identity and the social identity. You know, the same time and the, very often because this is a longitudinal study, I found that you know how people change sometimes is about, for example, personal relationship. They fall in love, you know, and they they decide they they change the what they they had planned before what they're going to do in their career, and and we all know it's common, or you know so maybe there are you know angles you know more than just see purely from human capital or rational choice or you know as such to understand the human being you know as a whole. Uh, you know, as a whole person, yeah, and 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 uh, that their concerns and their interaction with, uh, in order to understand their uh, decision making process. Um, so for me, I think, to what extent does Archer's conceptualization reflexivity provide an explanatory framework for our understanding of education and career decision making? Uh, that's something I am. Working on uh, because that's also part of my um, research interest uh, at the moment, but I think so far I hope uh, <laughs> I kind of uh, um, demonstrate the some use at least of Archer's work in in educational research in a very practical terms. So, question. Thank you, John. There's a lot of very good stuff, and I've learned I've learned a great deal more about Archer as a result of that than I knew before. Um, I'm going to I'm going to open it up to colleagues now, um, and uh, who would like to be the first to chip in? Can I just say thank you because I think, and having read a bit of Archer from the the coursework we were doing. I think it is hard to understand, mm. but it's even harder to explain to others. Yes. <laughs> I think. Yes. Um, so that's quite an achievement in itself. Thank you. But can I also agree that I think the simple idea of the mediation and the internal mm. conversation is enough mm. in itself mm. to explore. Mm. And when she starts categorising mm. people, as you say, there is mm. a concern mm. of labelling people, mm. isn't there, of being one kind of yeah. thinker or another kind yeah. of thinker. Yeah. And, and you have to be wary, I think. Yeah. In that yeah, because you know, one another reason for me raised that concern is, for example, Archer did her work. You know, I have to say that's something I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> a great sociologist always take a people from her backyard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> groups the undergraduate student from Warwick. One single subject, the latest book. You know, one single subject uh, or undergraduate in sociology. Um, come on, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, that, that's something, for one thing, she admit herself, there's no international students there. Mm. Okay, so for example, my example there, you know, if she talk about the contextual, you know, uh, the first communicative uh, um, 
reflexivity, reflexives are, are those ones who you know mostly experience this uh, uh, contextual you know stable continuity you know uh, live very close to parents and not never been traveled uh, and so they reject the new opportunities so my groups do they will be all out of that category you know for the fact of they coming to a new country study the degree you know on their own you know a thousand miles from home and that's already break that contextual but we all still we still all when we make decisions we talk to people we're trying to get some you know ideas and some confirmations of ideas from people so it, it, that's why I, I am you know i'm not um, particularly impressed on, on that aspect yes mm -hmm. It is here the idea of guidance when he said we are continuously reflecting upon our actions and choices based on our pre-knowledge before and through that reflexivity we come to change and we make decisions and those decisions they are intentional but they can lead to unintentional circumstances yes, yes. in which change can happen mm. say because I've, I've adopted the double hermeneutic for guidance in my PhD yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's actually the agency and structure and yeah. how the agency read the structure in which they are uh, acting yeah. but in the same time their reading and their reflexivity and how they imply this to get benefit of this structure and get in but yeah. this can lead that the structure itself will change and these changes will affect Mm. Uh, unwelcome mm. change to those Asians who plan it. And this goes kind of this movement mm. in which we have the practice and we have the refle reflexivity. Mm. And through that practice we go, which uh, Archer doesn't like in this kind of dualism. Mm. Um, but uh, I see that uh, if, if this structure is based on those different Asians when they come together to, come for, to, to construct that, we, I cannot split the two in one moment and say they are, they are, they are different. Um, and it is here where Giddens um, differentiate between the natural world, searching the natural world and searching the social world, searching the natural world in which if I am in the lab, searching some cells there, my reaction, what I'm doing with them, they don't react back. It's not like when I am interviewing. Of course, as a natural scientist, I am making decisions, and those de decisions are linked to my subjective choices mm. based on the, my view of the world and everything, whether I search this or not search this, or use this method or not to use this method. But when I come to the experiment, the experiment is not replying back to me. Mm. So, but when I am in a social world, as a researcher, if I talk about mm. research, when I go and interview people, they are reading me, they are reading my research, they are reading my aims, my goals. They are reading not me only on my research, they are reading the whole structure and how this can affect later on their organization or themselves mm. or, or that. And therefore, this can influence or mm. will influence in some way mm. how they react to my research or how they plan their development. Or, and this goes into, yes. so we are in an in interaction between the two and this keeps the changing through the agents they're changing their decisions alongside and the structure is being changed and an example of that if we say the um the educational structure in here ofsted and free schools and you see how much change is going on through time and they are the institutions are changing but the same the structure is changing their policies and so you see, Giddens and Archer means they are very similar yeah. about the reflexivity. They yes. come to the how can I split the I, agency yeah. from structure uh, in a yeah. certain moment? I agree. Actually, I think they are, you know, they are taking references very, uh, very similar in in a sense. But I think what Archer argues here is like um, is this is that cycles, you know, where, where you 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 have to well with something, uh, although. The effect of social properties, structural properties, only through you can only through social practice, but that's not you know as taken only rely on because of what um, Giddens emphasized this knowledgeability of agents, isn't it? But only not only rely on people's knowledge, you know, some just like there are some facts working behind behind our back, but you have you know you, as a as a 
research, we, we will need to investigate that, not just only depend on people's uh, account of it. So yeah, he that. mentioned the unintentional and the yeah. structure in which the agents in which they are acting in uh, within a context in which they may not be aware yeah. of some of the influences on their own. So their knowledge, they, they have knowledge, but this knowledge is, is limited mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, is developing and that through that their reflexivity and the outcome of their previous actions. Yeah. Can I, can I try a, I mean, I, it, I don't know Archer and I'm trying in a sense to use this exercise as a, as an opportunity to make sense of my, of my ignorance. Um, uh, but it, it, I mean, all, all the stuff, so, so she's playing into this idea of, and I'm want, want, wanting to be corrected here in my, in my misunderstandings of what, of what she's offering. But as, as I hear it, the, the structure agency, uh, dimension is not particularly uh, there's nothing particularly new about that mm. and what seems to be different what seems to be new is this idea that in the um, in, in, in the application or in the action of um, or in the way that, that uh, agency and structure interacts is is through the individual have, uh, conducting internal conversations mm -hmm. in which they interpret mm -hmm. the, 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 the world around them and the, you know, the social, physical world around them to, uh, and explain that to themselves it, it, uh, and justify or, or, or not whatever it is that they might be thinking of doing or not thinking of doing mm -hmm. or whatever. Is, 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 that, is that crudely about it? I mean, I, sorry, I don't use about it. it it's very <laughs> I mean, I know she's written lots of books, or, or, or so. so um, what, what am I missing? That's that's apart from the nine hundred ninety-nine pages. Well, I think I think slightly what's missing and what is that I don't think she's just categorising people into communicative mm. or autonomous yeah. and it's the process. Uh, those modes of reflection are expressing three human interests, if you like, in, in, in relationships, yes. in work, yes. and in being emancipated and free. Yes. So I, what she's trying to say is when she had this set, she thought some people predominated, thought more about work, some were more concerned with it. And that's to do with whether or not you're mm -hmm. disconnected from you. So what she's saying in her final book, isn't it, is that yes. there are fewer and fewer people who, who are whose all their decisions are made on the basis of staying with family and, and their natal context. Yeah. So really it's about the expression of concerns, it's about life projects, it's about what you think is important. So, so from where is this, um, this the way you've just characterised it, how is this derived? I mean, I, I understand that there's a resistance to typologies and we all welcome mm -hmm. that and so on, but um, what, I mean, the, the, the reference to empirical grounding here that you made, Tim, was, was first of all a, a questionnaire that sounded to be rather doubtful in its design, and then a, a one-person <laughs> case study that filled the whole book. And, you know, no, 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 but, but a lot where of, does it come from? Well, well, a lot of it is not new, is it? It's sociological ground that's been yeah. covered before. So structure and agency has been covered before. You know, types of human interest mm. has been covered. And she, um, in her book, she goes through the kind of tradition mm. that she's coming from. Well, then I have John's problem. Uh, what, what, what's yeah. new? Well, no, I, I don't think anything's... Well, I think, I think the mediation thing... Because what she's trying to the do, because what, has, being, yes. well, what hasn't been explained, yeah. is it? I mean, what, what all sociologists are trying to do, because it's not just a theory of morphogenesis, which is how things in society change. It's also mm. morphostatis, why things stay not the same. Change, yeah. so, so basically, she's, she's, that's what's been her kind of preoccupation, is, mm. is can we explain how and why mm. things stay the same and don't stay the same? Mm. So the internal conversation is another way Mm. of trying to kind of think about that. I mean, it, it, what's, what's in a way, is, is a link trying to link this individual and society. I mean, and also this kind of unlock this, you know, unpack this, the process of mediation and the process of, mm. you know, the 
reflexivity. Although it, it is, you know, it's simple when you say it, but uh, it's true. I think it's the work she has trying to do is very challenging itself, isn't it? Because very easily going to people thought, oh, it's just, is it the psychological, you know, uh, uh, process? But it's not, it's, you know, as you say, it's an interest, but also it's related to, you know, the wider social so, cultural context. So, 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 I mean, how far is it different from, or, um, I'm, think, I'm thinking of the sort of, the tradition of um, sort of, Oh, I, I'm not quite sure the word is, but interactive sociology. I'm thinking of things like Goffman and and um, and um, and um, you know the um, the, um, uh, the what the people are coming to mind, Garfinkel and all that kind of crowd. Are, are, is is this kind of different from that in, well, in, in you know all sociology is a way of talking about the relationship between structure and agency, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, in that sense, none of it's wildly different than anything mm -hmm. else, you know. But it's. Um, it's kind of lenses on it yes. and, and, and traditions on it. And she comes from a particular kind of realist tradition as opposed to, say, Bourdieu, who, who sees far less... More detailed. Well, she's much it's more far more deterministic. Agent, she? she's, yeah. Her focus is very much on the individual, isn't it, really, in yeah. terms of how is this all playing out in someone's mind. So it, so it is quite focused on their thinking in that re reflexive mm. pattern. But empirically, there is quite small studies, isn't it? Yes. It's, a, it's the, I think in 2007, she's got 120 something interviews uh, in commentary um, from a wide range of people. Yeah, a wide right, range. And then, yeah. it's, and the, the final book is a longitudinal study yes, yeah, of, under, of undergraduate, of undergraduate sociology yeah. undergraduates over, over their whole year. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and if, if we t if we then I mean, if we then ask the question, what does this add to our understanding of educational processes? And this is Jeanne's question. What does this add to our un understanding of educational processes that we wouldn't have had otherwise? Well, I don't know. That was my question. Was about your your, your PhD study. Mm. Is that I, c I can see you use the the framework of mm. social condition and social interaction and social elaboration. Mm -hmm. But what I wasn't clear of it, what, what was it about? Mm. I mean, you, theoretically, presumably you could have a badly taught, yes, big online where there wouldn't mm. have been of this course. agential activity, mm. you know, kind of pushing against the bad teaching. So. Mm -hmm. Presumably, it was something specific about the conditioning and interaction in that course that mm. produced the elaboration, that produced mm. the kind of changes. Mm. I mean, for me, I think it was a uh, because I was I was you know, Tehaj wasn't a like natural kind of decision. You know, I remembered I spent a whole summer reading, for example, activity theory, and I was stuck in the triangles. I couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, I, it's I, been a very wet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, I just so I think that um, when I start reading, I found that is the first is this uh, this uh, methodology, you know, kind of uh, this analytical dualism in the way which I uh, you know I I find it, I'd be able to kind of see you know how kind of uh, if I can unpack this process and I can you know put these uh, futures into this uh, different cycle. And I started to how they linked. And then I think that's how I kind of helped me reach that understanding. Not say, OK, I, I did an interview. People say this, and this happened. So retrospectively, oh, because uh, that's because I refer to this uh, a particular you know, uh, aspect of, uh, of the, 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 the course. And, but, but, mm. I suppose what I'm trying to say is that in, in other conditions and interactions, mm -hmm. there might have been morphostasis in the sense that the course went on being badly taught. Or yeah. yeah, it could be. Yeah, I think it, it, it could be so, you know, something... Well, I suppose something would have happened. Yeah, because if you say... Because what it interesting done is... Done very badly or left or... Yeah, it's a, in fact, what, what, you know, I had uh, two cases. You know, this is just... Uh, the example gave me just one case. And another case is... Uh, very much, you know, it designed differently, and then and then you know designed to uh, more, you know, actually, Charles knows that is the part of the China project, and we, we you know we designed mostly in 
by uh, practitioners here and then you know professionals here so and then we, we delivered in China but because the underestimate of the context a lot of that and it's not been so successful so it's one to achieve that I want to reach that uh, uh, learning community you know what's so designed how people should be learning is through this way but then so the did not exist but did not emerge but by contrast this very you know traditional didactic you know very badly designed you know very kind of a wholesale like the e-learning program but there's a e-learning program you know e-learning community your learning community convert you know emerged emerge. from that yeah emerged there so that kind of comparison i mean it's um but you don't know why no i don't know why well, so <laughs> why did it emerge out of that yeah, it's a uh, because then then I talk. Uh, there's a uh, you know through uh, study you know investigated people's interaction and uh, and uh, mm. what's really matters you know to um, for people to build that the connection and. Um, yeah, but it seems to me the e-learning space is a very interesting one to explore. I mean. Yeah. It, it, Maybe very crude characterization, but at one end of a continuum, you have got, of course, somewhat like the one you've just sketched, I think, and represents a particular approach to design. But at the other end, yeah. you've got these massively online open courses, might yeah, have 50,000 yeah. students on them, where the structure of the course seems to emerge um, unpredictably from the social patterns that, you know, mm. the, the students create within them. It's unpredictably. Well, unpredictably, I think, yeah. yeah because, yeah. And it, and so the relationship, <laughs> Yeah, between structure and, and, and curriculum or mm. designers mm. Is, is very unstable and very yes. so sort of quite an interesting space to explore. Yes, yeah, that's that, that's very interesting to explore in the future I would think because uh, part of the conclusion I think from uh, you know something I learned from my study is uh, you know there are sometimes you know there's uh, issues about some courses they over designed in the sense you know they they try to control how people learn and then uh, then they don't you know well just then when didn't work and then we have a reflection meeting for example back in the uk and people say oh that's because people are not used to the online learning they don't know how to learn through the discussion through reflection but that's wrong itself it's just like you design a boat and they sail and it sink and then you say oh this the sea is too deep you not they go back to think is there anything wrong with the design itself <coughs> so can, can, can I, I, I'm still confused here. <coughs> I can see this. It's good. But where does where where in in the conversation you've just been having mm. you've just been having? I don't see. Yeah, yeah things change. Things stay, stay the same, etc. I don't see where all this internal conversation comes in. I mean, did you ask the people? When, you, when, when that questionnaire, when you said, um, oh, why do they behave I, I the way what, they I do it? I think what I'm getting at is, yeah. if, if, if you are doing research or using a sort of arch yeah. framework, mm. Does yeah. that research have to involve asking people about yeah. their internal conversation? No, no, no. I just work is more than just internal conversation. Yeah. Oh, right. is okay. it? You didn't actually use I it. I did, because when I did my PhD, that example I gave, she hasn't wrote her, her book yet. Her <laughs> 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 internal can only come out 2007. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Like, in, in that, case, it's in that case, if it's not internal conversations, yeah. what is it that's, that, that yeah. makes yeah. Archer, so Archer so remarkable? Yeah. You know, what, what is it that... I think that was that morphogenic. Yeah, well, yeah, that's some of the genus cycles, and and also the the you know the, the earlier it's her work is a uh, yeah it's it's kind of, for me I haven't you know I think uh you you used you used some in your project in the mm -hmm. HE mm -hmm. ones, isn't it yeah in in the reflexive to mode things can talk well even though the internal conversation is by your recent admission a marginal. It's a very it's not. Oh, sorry. Now it is. <laughs> I think Margaret Ross would be very upset to hear that. Then I have all the more. Three. Mentioned. She. I mean, she's got an oeuvre, hasn't she, of about ten books, maybe seven. Three of which are uh, focused on the internal. Yes, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. what's the stasis and authority of this concept? I mean, psychologically, I think it's very interesting, but it sounds to me very slippery, and I'd just like to know more about. it. You want to know what the scientific evidence to support well, this? I, I don't. It doesn't have any substance until you open it up a bit more. I mean, what is what is it to have an internal conversation, and by what mm. means is Archer observing, cataloging? She, it's, it's, it's she, 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 she has. I don't feel I have them. She has a kind of 
um, you don't. No, I don't do it. a framework of, of, of the touch. She, 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 has, she has a big framework, doesn't she? Of what She asks people about what they've been planning. I, I can't remember. How they planning, think through their planning. decisions, really. It's yeah. how do people work yeah. out their it's decisions. It's a deeply flawed method. <laughs> well, certainly from a psychologist's point of view, it's no harm in, that. in introspective. In, it is introspection. So she's asking them to kind of reveal, you know, how they think. That's how she does it. Mm. Or retrospectively, 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 constructed, con retrospectively constructed. That's how she actually does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, so we're we're moderately satisfied that this is. There are these internal conversations that people have. Well, this is, the, I think this is fairly well established. I mean, you know, people yeah, have been I'm, talking I'm about. I'm not prepared to believe it. Yeah, it sounds me talks talks about that, doesn't he? Kind yeah, of yeah, the eyes yeah, and the knees yeah, and, yeah, you know, all yeah. that, that thing. And that's where she's coming from. So yeah. she's she's quite definitely standing on the shoulders of others, you know. She's not, mm. she's not saying, I'm coming up with something. Yeah. You know, I'm building on yeah, yeah. this tradition. Okay. Mm. Can I just ask you, uh, um, about the e-learning platform that you're using in China. It sounds to me quite interesting that uh, wow. the lecture, yeah, I, I suppose the media instruction is yeah. in English. I don't think it's there's one unif you know, form, uh, platform because they, you will be some di different take in different institutions and, uh, and so For that, that uh, platform that you're yeah, that, mentioning, yeah, I forgot the name. For translation. So oh. I, yeah, it's good that, that in the community of learn learners, they have somebody who came up with this translation. But if to expect a TA to translate every lecture and tutorial in Eng from English to Chinese, I assume. No, no, no. I think it was the eradicating that was a problem. It yes. the fact that she yeah. didn't do it. She said it was not my job, yeah. but it was the yeah. fact that someone stepped yeah. in and did yes. it. Mm. And then to wipe that out. Mm. Yes was a powerful gesture, wasn't it? Yeah, really? yeah. You're saying, you are not in a position of authority, you should be yes, doing this. Yes, that's right. There's a whole lot there, yes, isn't there, about yeah. what that message is, yeah. which then inflamed would it, people's would responses. Would it also cause, uh, uh, like, you're opening up a Pandora's box that every lecture and tutorial you expect a translation from English to Chinese, then that would be a massive job, you know? Especially if it's, let's say, your media instructions in English and your university is, let's say, a UK university, I assume, then um, you, you're trying to get the degree which is UK-based and video instruction in English and if you can uh, complete your degree without an understanding of the basic structure of education in English, then I think it's also a flaw in itself. It throws up a lot of questions, doesn't it, yeah. about the yeah. actual learning yeah. frameworks that yeah. are being used anyway. Because yeah. I'm asking this question because I'm coming from Singapore and when we do e-learning, e we don't have to expect this because I suppose this social, cultural yeah. aspect is quite different because in Singapore, media instruction is in English, so we won't have... It depends how they sold the course, asking, isn't it? Yeah. If someone mm. paid, if you paid for a course, it's what, what, what you were sold it as. If you were sold it as an English course, everything mm. will be in English, mm. yes. then you can't really complain, can you? Yeah, yeah. But if you paid for a course that is supposed to be bilingual, or but, yeah. I suppose it's I also suppose the cultural context you know, it's in China. Commodity you bought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I think this example is, in, is, in, is, is show how people can use their collective agent power to make a change, you know, yeah. and the, in the even during a, a short period of time, yeah. and the, from that perspective to to understand the, like the learner's experience, and also what you say, um, I don't know what's so different about this internal community. I think it's a, firstly I think I agree with Archer's claim, which is not a pure psychological process. You know, it's really relational terms. It's always you know refers to the you know the, the just structure what people find themselves in and um, and also what I found that because my study was started to understand trying to understand learners experience and you know her take and uh, her notion of you know being human and the reflexivity being as the, the central power of you know of being uh, of humanity which give a very active role a real active role to individual learners rather than what we talk about all this learner centered you know education and all this but it's people can make a decision can make a difference in a way although it's within the constraint of you know certain circumstance 
So it's, you know, should, I'm not saying this will be a superior, you know, sphere for everyone, but it should my need in the, you know, uh, to understand, to provide me that particular perspective for me to understand those learners' experience. And, um, and uh, for me, it's because you can only say, because it's theory is not truth, is it? I mean, we're not claiming something, she's not claiming something about it's a, a truth or fact. It's about, it's a tool. If something if it helped me, then that's a good tool. So I think that's a role of theory for me. I mean, it helped me to understand better. Thank you very much. I think that's the point at which yes. uh, a controversial statement on which I think we, we call things <laughs> uh, to an end. But thank you, Jen. You, 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 you've, 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 um, you know, you've given a very interesting presentation and stimulated a very interesting discussion and um, you know, made a very good start to the year's work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.